I'm the Washington Township Park Naturalist. And today's vlog is all about butterflies, now specifically monarch butterflies. What is monarch butterfly? Have you ever seen a bright orange and black butterfly fluttering around some flowers? Most likely that was a monarch butterfly. Along with their orange stained glass looking coloration, monarchs have black bodies with small white dots. The unique coloration acts as warning colors for predators, telling the predators I am not tasty. Some may mistake moths for butterflies. A few defining features of moths are fuzzy or feathery antennae, a fuzzy body, and their wings fold flat. Butterflies have slender antennae and bodies and can fold their wings upright. While many are familiar with the monarch butterfly, not many have seen a monarch butterfly in its younger form, an egg, caterpillar, or chrysalis. Monarch butterflies begin life as an egg, a teeny tiny egg. These eggs often can be found on the underside of a milkweed leaf. The milkweed is the monarch's only food source as a larva. Once the egg hatches, a tiny little caterpillar emerges and begins eating and eats and eats and eats. It is crucial for these caterpillars to eat as much as possible so they can grow. These caterpillars go through five stages of caterpillar growth. These stages are called instars. The first instar is the newly hatched caterpillar, and the fifth instar caterpillar is ready to transform into a chrysalis. The caterpillar forms the pupa chrysalis by flipping upside down and forming a J-shape with its body. While the monarch is a chrysalis, something amazing happens. The chrysalis turns completely green with small golden flecks near the top of the chrysalis. This is probably where its name comes from, the golden crown of a monarch. The monarch then completes its metamorphosis in the chrysalis. During the last few days of its chrysalis stage, the chrysalis becomes clear and the bright orange and black markings of a monarch butterfly are visible. Finally, the monarch butterfly emerges from its chrysalis. It gently opens its wings to dry them. Once dry, the monarch is ready for its first flight. This cycle then begins again as females lay eggs on the milkweed. Monarch butterflies are known for their incredible migration pattern. The area they travel is so large it's considered a continental migration. Western monarchs fly from the Rocky Mountains to the California coast. Eastern monarchs begin their migration in the States and Canada. When the weather turns cold, they begin their flight south to Mexico. Millions of monarch butterflies migrate to the fir forest of Mexico's central highlands. For some monarchs, that is a 3,000 mile journey. These butterflies overwinter in Mexico and then when the weather warms, they begin their flight back and begin laying eggs for the second generation. Four generations of monarchs are born in one year. This means a great-grandmother monarch butterfly who flew from Mexico will lay an egg, and that butterfly will lay an egg, and that butterfly will lay an egg, and that butterfly will take the trip to Mexico and back as well. Amazingly, the fourth generation butterflies know exactly where to go in Mexico. They travel to the same place their great grandmothers flew to the year before. Monarch butterflies play a role in pollination at a continental scale. Due to their population size and large range, monarchs historically have played an important role in the food web throughout their life cycle, as eggs, caterpillars, and adults. Monarchs also play a significant role in cultures all over the continent. Festivals and parades all over the country celebrate their migrations. The arrival of monarchs in their overwintering grounds in Mexico coincides with the Day of the Dead festivities, and the butterflies are believed to represent the visiting souls of the departed. Monarchs are familiar and beloved. 
Many people enjoy watching them in their yards, parks, and gardens. If you haven't seen a monarch butterfly, especially recently, you're not alone. The monarch butterfly population is declining rapidly across the country. The eastern population that winters in Mexico has fallen by 85% since the mid-1990s. The western population that winters in California has declined by 99%. The Center for Biological Diversity states, Since the 1990s, North American monarchs have lost about 167 million acres of summer breeding habitat to agricultural intensification and suburban sprawl. Milkweed, the monarch caterpillar's only food source, has been nearly eradicated from areas of the Midwest where monarchs were typically born. Scientists estimate that billions of milkweed plants have been wiped out due to the increased herbicide use. The Center for Biological Diversity also states how monarchs are threatened by neonicotinoids and other systemic insecticides. Neonicotinoids are chemicals used to protect crops from pests. So what can we do? Firstly, research the Monarch Act of 2021. If passed, the act will provide $125 million over five years to protect the Western population. Despite their dramatic decline, the monarch species is not yet protected under the Endangered Species Act. Secondly, plant milkweed, the monarch caterpillar's only food source. It's important to make sure any milkweed or flowers planted have not been treated with insecticides. Plants that say they have been protected from aphids can be toxic to pollinators. Be sure to check with retailers or nurseries first to make sure they do not use neonicotinoids. Supporting organizations that protect overwintering habitat is just as important as planting milkweed. The communities in Mexico that live near the forest where these butterflies overwinter need help in protecting these areas. Monarch butterflies are incredible, beautiful, and beloved. If you have any questions about monarch butterflies, check out the Center for Biological Diversity's website. Also check out Monarch Watch for updates on migrations, population numbers, and sightings. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for more videos to come.